President's Management Agenda. My name is Michael Copeland, and I'm the Regional Administrator for the U.S. General Services Administration. And I have the distinct privilege of hosting this event here in Kansas City as we unveil the President's Management Agenda. The first time, folks, this is historic. It's the first time it's ever been unveiled outside of the nation's capital. So I'm thrilled to see some familiar faces here. Mike Regis, Deputy Director of OPM. Don Bice, the Acting Deputy Assistant Secretary at USDA. Gary Washington, the USDA CIO. Will Brady, the Associate Deputy Secretary for HHS. Judge Nancy Griswold, Chief Administrative Law Judge for the HHS Office of Medicare Hearing and Appeals. And some representatives from our senators. We have Chad Tenpenny from Senator Roberts' office. We have Matt Haas from Senator Blunt's office. And from Representative Hartzer's office, we have Matt, uh, excuse me, Delilah Nichols and Adam Timmerman. And uh, Blair Benedict from Representative Marshall's office. So welcome. I want to also acknowledge David Warm, the uh, Mid America Regional Council Executive Director, and Josh Maxfield from Garmin. Thank you for joining us today. And in just a few minutes, you'll be hearing from senior officials from the administration that have joined us today to discuss the PMA. They include Margaret Weikert. Margaret is the Deputy Director for Management at the Office of Management and Budget. Emily Murphy, the GSA Administrator. Dr. Jeff Pon, Director of the Office of Personal Management. And Suzette Kent from the Federal Chief Information Office. But before we get started, I'd like to show you a little video, a little bit more about the PMA. People don't always think about government, but when we need government services, we expect them to work. Government is and should be dedicated to the mission of serving our communities, protecting our safety, and growing our economy. Today, people can order a car for a ride to the airport with a smartphone, but farmers still have to drive hours to the nearest USDA office to apply in person for crop insurance. Our government must recognize that federal customers deserve an experience comparable to leading private sector practices. This is why we have relaunched the President's Management Agenda, the PMA. This agenda offers a vision that will not only change the way government serves its people, but will drive a deep-seated transformation that will last generations. Through our three key initiatives of IT modernization, data accountability and transparency, and federal workforce transformation, we believe the needed and profound change in government is possible. The President's management agenda embraces remarkable ingenuity and capabilities that prepare our government to meet the needs of the American people in the 21st century. You can learn more about the President's Management Agenda at omb.gov. So live streaming this via our YouTube channel. So for those of you just joining us, welcome. When I first learned the White House had chosen Kansas City to make this announcement, my first thought was they're looking for a great opportunity to enjoy world-class barbecue. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but I believe Kansas City is the perfect venue. While we may be best known for our barbecue or our sporting teams, Kansas City is home to a very large, very hardworking, and very dedicated federal workforce. If you factor in all the metropolitan area federal employees and military installations, tens of thousands of federal employees in some capacity, making the federal government the largest federal employer in Kansas City. We're here today because the administration recognizes 
that role of the federal government is to serve the American people and not just the people in Washington. Our first speaker this morning is OMB Deputy Director Margaret Weikert. Ms. Weikert was sworn in to her position just a few weeks ago. She is a seasoned business executive with more than 25 years of experience. She has joined the administration after having served as a principal at EY and in various senior leadership positions at Market Platform Dynamics, First Data, Bank of America, and Anderson Consulting, where she contributed in developing business processes for banking and payment applications. She's also an owner of 14 patents. So, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm Kansas City welcome for Margaret Weikert. Welcome. Thank you, Mike, for your warm words. I really appreciate the Kansas City welcome, and I'm really thrilled to be here in Kansas City. I have some prepared remarks, but first I actually wanted to thank all of you. Um, as Mike mentioned, we wanted to be here in Kansas City because we understand there are more than 50,000 federal employees here in the greater metropolitan area serving the people of the United States. And focusing on the mission every day. And we're launching some broad strokes around the President's management agenda today, but we also are here to listen and understand more about the mission. So I'm, I'm really thrilled to be here in the show me state, so close to the Sunflower State with my friends Administrator Murphy, uh, uh, Director Jeff Pawn, and Suzette Kent, our new federal CIO. My name is Margaret Weikert, and I'm the Deputy Director for Management in the Office of Management and Budget. Um, for those in the know, it's the M in OMB. Um, it's not the Office of Margaret and Budget, but um, I just entered public service last year, um, but have spent 27 years in the private sector, and there I learned the importance with starting with the customer, the customer first. This is why we're here in Kansas City close to the customers and the people who serve them. So as I come into government nearly two decades into the 21st century, I know that the public still believes the federal government has important work to do, but America's trust in the federal government continues to decline, sitting at near historic lows. The public is frustrated with government's perceived inability to deliver quality services. When people can order a car ride to the airport with a smartphone, I cringe when I read about a farmer in Parkville, Missouri, having to take half day from the farm in order to drive to the nearest USDA office to do business with the USDA. Or when small business owners apply for loans, but the process is so complicated and antiquated that it requires a fax machine and lots of waiting. This is an important reason why trust in government is declining. So we must change the way government operates and we need to enter the 21st century. The business of the federal government is to serve the American people, but we can't perform when we have outdated technology and we're not setting up our workforce to meet the public's expectations. Rather than throwing money at the problem or pursuing short-term fixes that become outdated as soon as we implement them, this administration in is investing in a deep-seated transformation through the President's management agenda. This agenda lays out a long-term vision for modernizing the federal government in key areas that will improve the ability of agencies to work on behalf of the people, to deliver mission outcomes, provide excellent service to the American people, and effectively steward taxpayer dollars. So how do we get there? To move us from vision to action, the President's management agenda focuses on three key drivers of transformation. The first driver is information technology, IT modernization. IT is the backbone of how government serves the public in the 21st century. We must invest in IT that is modern, secure, and resilient, and meets citizens' expectations if we are to meet the needs of 21st century government. The second driver is data, accountability, and transparency. Data is what enables the government to do everything from making better decisions to providing transparency to the public. We will track progress on our work and share it publicly so that America can hold us accountable. Moreover, data is a foundational asset to driving economic growth and innovation. 
The last driver, and perhaps the most important, and the reason we're here in Kansas City, is the workforce for the 21st century. We need to provide our federal managers and employees the tools and capabilities to best serve our citizens today and in the future. We make it too hard for you to hire, too hard to reskill, and yes, too hard to deal with poor performers. Building on the Amer administration's civil service reform agenda, we want to empower everyone from senior leaders to frontline managers to respond dynamically to the mission and service needs of each agency where folks are sitting in the field. So how will we make real tangible progress in these big areas? You've heard administrations in the past talk about many of these same topics. We're not inventing something wholly new. What we are doing is focusing on getting her done. We're focusing on execution. So a key part of the President's management agenda is establishing cross-agency priority goals, or what we call CAP goals, to actually complement the broad vision and get into execution and on-the-ground tactics. So for each of our drivers of change and other important priority areas like customer service, improper payments, each CAP goal will be led by an interagency team of senior federal leaders. To see what's happening, the public can go online to performance.gov, where each goal has a specific action plan and can see the progress that we're making every quarter. For agencies, the bottom line is delivering results for the American people. Agency leaders have been revising their strategic plans, including setting specific goals in coordination with our broader President's management agenda. For example, the VA has committed to increasing trust in VA by veterans from 67% to 90% in the next two years. This is one of the cap goals that is a priority for us. And they are partnering with OMB and the President's Management Council to more broadly improve customer experience across government. The EPA has committed to reducing the number of areas not meeting air quality standards from 166 to 138 in two years. Treasury will reduce the average approval time for alcohol and tobacco business permits by 20%. And Labor has set a goal to enroll 280,000 new apprentices to promote and expand apprenticeship opportunities. These strategic plans are now also online at performance.gov. It's important to us to announce the President's management agenda here in Kansas City, as I said, and not in Washington, D.C. 80% of our overall federal employees live outside the nation's capital, and many of them are right here in the Show Me State. This administration is committed to driving change that will last. We're here from across federal agencies to listen and learn, hear your needs, and take what we learn back to D.C. So whether you're a federal employee, a small business owner, a farmer, or a major employer, we are here to listen and learn how government can modernize to better serve you. This President's management agenda lays the foundation to address the critical challenges where government as a whole still operates in the past. This listening tour is one of many steps to building a stronger America and providing 21st century services Americans can and should expect today and tomorrow. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to your feedback today and in the future. The last thing I actually want to say is happy National Ag Day um, to our colleagues here in USDA. Thanks so much. Thank you, Margaret. Exciting things ahead. Our next speaker is Emily Murphy, my boss, a St. Louis native and administrator of the U.S. General Service Administration. Emily was sworn in as GSA Administrator on December 12. As the head of GSA, she leads a staff of 11,600 employees nationwide, overseeing more than 371 million square feet of property and approximately $54 billion in annual contracts. But she's not new to the GSA either. Ms. Murphy was serving as Senior Advisor to GSA's Acting Administrator when she helped guide the merger of the Federal Acquisition Service and the Technology Transformation Service and advised on opportunities to improve how GSA facilitates technology purchases.
From 2005 to 2007, she was appointed the Chief Acquisition Officer and led the transformation of GSA's Assisted Acquisition Centers and the consolidation of the Federal Supply Service and the Federal Technology Service. She has served as GSA's representative to the Federal Acquisition Regulatory Council and the leader of the Civilian Agency Acquisition Council, which are responsible for procurement regulations. In this capacity, she helped to modernize the regulations to reflect the government's increasing use of service contracts as opposed to commodity buys. Please help me give a warm welcome home to Missouri. Welcome to Administrator Murphy. Thank you for the warm introduction. As the Administrator for General Services, I'm honored and excited to have the opportunity to play such a meaningful role in implementing the President's management agenda and helping modernize government for the 21st century. The General Services Administration was created by President Truman, so I like to think of our agency as being born in Missouri, just like me. This is the first time the President's management agenda has been un unveiled outside of Washington, D.C. It's important that we are here today in the heartland of America to unveil the administration's plan to improve the ways people interact with their government. Missouri is where I had my first job, answering phones at our family construction company. It's where I watched my mother show me firsthand that a woman can do anything when she started practicing law in 1971. It's where I spent weekends on my late uncle's farm and watched my sister start a successful small business. Missouri is also where I learned the importance of serving others and making your interactions with people meaningful. These values have stuck with me throughout my career, and they're important to one of our key goals, making it easier for citizens to connect with their government. Far too often, Americans are dissatisfied with the interactions they have with their government. In government, we've neglected innovation for far too long. As a result, we have outdated, clunky, duplicative, and expensive systems that don't provide effective services. By focusing on long, due, long overdue modernization in government and embracing the best innovation the private sector has to offer, the President's management agenda will provide taxpayers with the services they deserve and better return on investment. GSA is uniquely positioned to help the rest of the federal government best serve the American people through its role in helping other agencies carry out their critical missions. That's why we have been tasked with leading the role in IT modernization and implementing shared services, where appropriate, across the government. GSA, along with the White House Office of American Innovation, are beginning the first phase of this important work through new IT centers of excellence. These centers of excellence combine private sector knowledge with public sector expertise to centralize best practices and offer hands-on implementation assistance to customer agencies. The Centers of Excellence will focus on cloud migration, infrastructure modernization, and other foundational technology and security improvements. All of these items support a better user experience, whether the person is a farmer applying for crop insurance, a small business owner applying for a loan, a veteran accessing their benefits, or anyone else interacting with their government. The first contracts for these Centers of Excellence were awarded last week to stand up the centers within the USDA our first client agency, who I'm especially excited to talk about since today is National Ag Day. They'll offer, the, uh, to the, this will allow us to produce a more effective and efficient user experience for the farmers who rely on USDA services. Additionally, the President's management agenda charges GSA with adopting shared services across government agencies. Implementing this best practice in the private sector will help us move from, for example, five payroll systems to a single shared provider. This process will help government eliminate costly duplication and save valuable taxpayer money. These are very important, ambitious, and wide-reaching goals. Although I've been the GSA administrator for just shy of 100 days, it'll be 100 days Thursday, <laughs> I have over two decades of experience in government contracting. Based on this background, I can unequivocally say that the actions taken by President Trump represent the most aggressive commitment to creating a more responsive and efficient government I've seen. I'm pleased to say that GSA is well positioned to institute this transformation 
and I couldn't be more excited to be back here in Missouri to announce the exciting work we had before us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emily. Dr. Jeff Pond became the 11th director of the United States Department of Personnel Management on March 9. He has over 25 years of experience in leading organizations and transforming talent management in the private and public sectors. Dr. Pond previously served as the Society for Human Resources Management's Chief Human Resource and Strategy Officer. He was the president and COO of Futures Inc. Uh, he was a principal of Booz Allen Hamilton, the Chief Human Capital Officer for the U.S. Department of Energy, and served as the Director and Deputy Director of E-Government at the U.S. Office of Personal Management. While in service, he was honored with the 2004 Grace Hopper Award, the 2004 E-Government Explorers Award, the 2005 Federal 100, the 2008 Gold Medal from the Director of National Intelligence, the 2008 Distinguished Service Award from the Administrator for the National Nuclear Security Administration. Wow. From Ashburn, Virginia, welcome with me, Dr. Jeff Pond. Thank you, Michael. Thank you all for welcoming me to uh, Kansas City. Uh, I know there are a lot of people in the audience uh, from different agencies, congressional offices, our own MBIB, uh, VA, uh, HUD, every single acronym known to the federal government is probably in this room right now. Uh, I get the pleasure of serving with uh, these three members of the president's uh, team. Uh, we really are the administration's administration. Uh, so we have management, we have federal procurement and, and property management, we have HR and also IT. So you're really looking at the leaders of the people that are going to be leading us in the uh, 21st century workforce. Uh, when we started creating, uh, tasked with creating the President's Management Agenda, both uh, OMB and OPM got together and said, what do we want to do? What do we want to do on our watch? What have, we been, what have we been waiting for in the last 20 to 30 years, maybe even 40 years, in terms of updating our personnel systems? Um, a lot has changed in the last 40 years. Think about even 20 years ago. Uh, what did your technology look like? You had your Blackberries, right? You didn't even have your Wi-Fis. And as citizens, the expectation has grown that the thing in your breast pocket or your purse, um, the technology actually works. Uh, Margaret talked about uh, booking a, a, a car. You can go to uh, any of your, uh, you know, your restaurants and order ahead and pick it up. So the expectation of technology actually working as private citizens is there. And yet when we come back to the federal government, and you look at our systems, even here at OPM, I would consider them uh, clunky. Not very efficient, not very streamlined, not very data driven. And that's what we're gonna bring about uh, to this uh, new era of how we're managing employees. Uh, making sure that we are streamlining recruitment so it is not the pass the rock back and forth. It's a pink rock, it's a red rock, and we have to keep on exchanging. I know many of the federal managers in here experience that. You have to fit everything to the GS scale every 15 and step, step tens. And we manage that, uh, the federal workforce on large part in the 150 board checkerboard that we have Many of these occupations aren't as defined. Uh, I, I turn to my colleague, Suzette, who, who's managing uh, the IT and IT security uh, workforce here. Those occupations didn't exist 20 years ago, not, let alone five years ago. When you're t we're talking about uh, offensive and defensive cybersecurity, those are things that have just been learned in the last two, three, four, five years. And people out there are competing for the same talent. So how are we, as the federal government, going to field those uh, people? We're going to streamline recruiting. We're going to make sure that we, we have the training involved to close the gaps for the next generation of what we need as skills in the federal government. We need to re-examine each and every one of our agencies, and we need to close those gaps. We need to make sure that there is room 
for those people coming on board and also taking care of the people that we have currently and making sure that they can be prepared for the future. So that really is the vision for what we're trying to do uh, in the federal workforce. Um, I really want to see a day where we get out of the paper. At OPM, we still have uh, a lot of paper-driven systems. Uh, when I was back in uh, OPM as the e-government person, uh, we made a dent in it. Uh, we went from 27 pay separate payroll systems down to four, and now Emily is, is talking about making sure that we can even streamline that. That excites me. And why? Is because there's so much duplication across our government that really doesn't serve us well. We can make sure that we have common data sources for our administration of health care benefits and also our retirement systems, which is a very fundamental thing for the administration of the current workforce and retired workforce. Uh, let me leave you with uh, another point. In our lifetime, when I say our lifetime, when we are here to do things with you, I would challenge you to participate in on our projects that we're going to demonstrate some new ways of looking at the workforce, not only in the recruitment or performance management or even separation management, those HR inherent things, but the DNA of how we actually reward people, how our culture works, the whole philosophy of having a job for life is something a thing of the past, a thing that if you ask the new, new generations joining our workforce, five years going into FERS just doesn't make sense to them. Everybody treats the, the job as an internship whether you like it or not. It's 2.3 years in terms of uh, their average tenure, even in the federal government. So we're going to have to readjust our people systems here. And I am so grateful that Margaret and our president is saying, let's do it now. Let's do the things that we haven't been able to do for the last 10 or 20 years. So I look forward to work, working with you and filling in those details and being bold and ambitious for this because this is the time. There has not been a director of OPM that actually has an HR experience for the last 40 years. So kind of know what I'm doing, but I need all your advice. So let's get to work. And I really appreciate you welcoming me here today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pond. Well, Suzette Kent was appointed as the Federal Chief Information Officer for the United States by President Trump on January 29. She is only the fourth person to hold that role since it was created in 2002 by the E-Government Act. Before her appointment, Ms. Kent served as the principal of the Banking and Capital Markets Advisory Team at EY, a partner at Accenture, and consulting president at Carriker Corporation and direct managing director at JP Morgan. She is an industry leader of large scale business and technology transformation for the world's most complex global organizations. Although technology change has been at the core of her professional career, retooling the workforce and creating new opportunities for people has been an essential element of efforts that she has led. She has served as an enterprise leader for organizational learning, diversity and inclusiveness and career development at every organization in which she has worked. Please join me in welcoming Federal Chief Information Officer, Suzette Kent. Thank you very much. And you know, I, I think as I, I was reflecting as I listened to Michael read all the bios, that even the people here on stage represent one of the themes that we're talking about today bringing the best experience in a government career and bringing the learnings from private sector. So even the leaders that you see sitting on the stage represent um, the combination of those. So thank you for welcoming us here to Kansas City for the great turnout today. It's an honor to be here to listen and learn in a city that's one of our largest federal sites. You've heard about the vision of transformation from Deputy Director Weikert. You heard the great strides that we have made already with both Dr. Pond and Administrator Murphy and the critical investment that we're making in building the workforce of the 21st century. And in all of their comments, you heard a recurring theme, the important investment in the people. 
And I'm thrilled today as I talk to you to see some of my technology partners sitting in the audience. And Gary, I'm glad you're here in the front row. But I want to close, and I promise I will be fast. That's the honor of going last, um, but with the last piece of the puzzle. The next piece of the PMA that's important to the foundation of modernization, as you heard in Margaret's opening comments, is data. Every day, Americans are interacting with government services. It might be that you're applying for a student loan. It may be as simple as you're changing your address. The United States government holds some of the most important data in the world, yours and all of ours. Under the PMA, we're embarking on efforts to, to define a data strategy that will serve as the foundation for the next decade. Not just solve problems today, but serve as a foundation for the next decade. And we're also addressing those near-term challenges. We're bringing private sector experts, we're engaging with academic communities, and we're bringing the best of government thinking together to unlock and enhance our options to protect and leverage data in the constantly connected world that you've heard each person talk about. We have a very important responsibility, and I am here from the public sector because of my personal passion for this mission, protecting and securing our cyber borders from foreign entities, but at the same time, serving our citizens with 21st century capabilities and accountability and providing data transparency. So protecting and at the same time providing visibility and transparency. So whether we're providing GPS data to a first responder, whether we're collecting census data through a mobile app that makes it much more convenient for citizens, or whether we're using leading edge AI with our military data, the President's management agenda is empowering technologies with a strategic view of data as one of our mission critical assets. And as I close, particularly here, I look forward not only to talking more about what we intend to do through the CAP goals Margaret reference, but showing you the results. So thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. We're about to conclude today's uh, presentation. Federal employees are invited to the cafeteria conference room for a town hall. Uh, but before that, I'd like to ask Ms. Weikert uh, if you'd come up and give us some closing remarks. Thank you, everybody. Thanks again, Michael, and um, thanks again to you all. I promise this will be really short. Um, you've definitely heard um, how excited we are to be here in Kansas City to kick off the President's Management Agenda. Um, it's, a, it's an honor to be in a place where you're investing in the future of people, in the future of innovation, in our businesses and our communities. So we thank you very much for the work that you do and for welcoming, welcoming us here. Um, we also wanted to just shout out um, and underscore our commitment to the President's Management Agenda as a tool to bring agencies into the process of transformation. We have representatives uh, from across government, um, and so after this event, we'll have this town hall where we're going to be talking to federal employees from, from a range of um, agencies. Most importantly, though, we're here to listen. So we've, we've fleshed out some broad strokes in terms of where we're focused. We've talked about some specific cap goals, cross-agency priority goals, but mostly we want to listen. And we've got a number of really exciting opportunities. So we've got visits today um, uh, and, and tomorrow to USDA facilities, GSA, IRS, HHS, uh, Veterans Administration, OPM, and we're also going to the Lake City Army Ammunition Plant as it hosts the Federal Executive Board meeting. Um, there's also going to be a visit to the Truman Library um, to remind us about what the Show Me State is all about, which is results. Um, and to top it all off, we're connecting with the leaders of tomorrow at the University of Missouri Innovation Center and talking to folks from the Kansas City Chamber of Commerce. So as you can see, we really want to learn how we can do better in providing government of the people, by the people, for the people, and serve the mission of the 21st century. 
I'd finally like to uh, thank everyone who attended today, including the many state and local community leaders, uh, congressional representatives, and members of the media. Um, I'd very much like to thank the federal leaders from both Washington who helped support um, our, our trip here, and most especially the folks here in Kansas City who has, have welcomed us and created this wonderful space in which we can um, share our vision with you and get to learn uh, about the mission in the field. So thank you very much for your efforts to help build a more effective federal workforce and to help us launch the President's Management Agenda. Thank you so very much. Have a good day, everybody.